The ID wire path is critical to the success of the whole installation. Generally, the wire is laid in the same trench as the pipe. The color-coded external jacket on ID wire ensures that there are no shorts to earth over the entire wire run. This saves labor and keeps the components in one place since they all have to go out to the valves. Conduit is not required by Hunter for proper installation. However, local and electrical codes may differ. Always follow the local electrical code in your area. There is no problem if you do not install the wire in conduit. Here are some valves in need of a decoder. The valves are already plumbed into the pipe and the ID wire has been run into the valve box area. We have left about 5 feet or 1.5 meters of slack to work with at each valve location. This is an important specification because it will make the installation and all of our future service much easier. It will also prevent accidental disconnection if the earth is subject to saturation or freezing. So here we'll be installing a dual two station output decoder. We have the red and blue wires that will attach to our wire path and we have the two blacks and the two yellows which are the station outputs to the solenoids. You'll start by having the ID wire looped up for about five feet of extra wire above ground to work with or about two and a half meters and you can see that the ID wire comes into this valve box it loops up and continues on downstream. We're going to attach the decoder and we're going to start by severing the two wire path and now we'll have both ends. At that point in time you'll simply score the outside of the polyethylene jacket. Don't go all the way through, simply score it and it'll snap right off and you can expose your inner red and blue two wires. You can untwist them for ease of operation. Remember this portion is going to be in the finished valve box. You'll still have your outer hard jacket for protection outside of the box. So you can strip back as much as you'll need to make your connections. We'll do the same thing on the other side of the two wire run. Simply score the outside making sure you don't go all the way through. Once it's scored it snaps off like a pretzel and that outer jacket will slide right off. Untwist your reds and your blues for ease of operation. And what we're going to do next is we're going to strip back this inner wire to about three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters. We don't want to strip this wire back very far or I should say overly far because we'll have to enclose these in the DBR connectors and we don't want any exposed copper outside of the connection when we're finally finished. We'll repeat the process over here for the two reds about three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters. And you'll notice on the two station decoder we've got a red and a blue and we're going to basically complete the red to red with one of the red wires on the decoder. And we want to trim him to about three fourths of an inch as well. The DBR wire nuts, I should say DBRY, are red and yellow because they accommodate the use of the 14 gauge wire as well as the 12 gauge wire. So if your wire is a bit thicker or if it's the 14 gauge, the one wire nut will work in both cases. Insert your two wire as well as your red wire to the decoder. So now we'll go ahead and hook up the blue wire onto the two wire path. And here at the top, once again, we've got the two blue wires coming into the box and heading back out again. We've stripped them back to about three-fourths of an inch, or 20 millimeters. And we're going to include the blue wire from the two-station decoder module here into our splice. Remember, these six connections are critical. You want to make sure that you've got good watertight connections on the main two-wire path. So we'll take all three together, insert the wire nut, Apply it firmly, and remember, make sure that you've got every wire in there tight and nothing's coming out loose. 
Now that you've got your wire nuts in place, we'll use the capsules from the DBR Y connectors. Regular greased wire nuts just like this does not fly down the road. You will get water intrusion. You want a true waterproof connector. Slide the wire nut all the way into the bottom until it hits there. And you've got enough for three for a three wire splice. So we'll separate out the three wires in the cap and then we'll simply snap the cap over. You'll hear a click. And there's a good waterproof connector that will last the lifetime of the system. You'll repeat the process for the blue wire as well. Insertion of wire nut into connector must be aligned in the angled slot. Push wire nut all the way down to the bottom of the connector. Close connector cap. You will hear a click when each latch is closed. Final result, a secure waterproof wire connection.